Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you've ever wanted to create your own chat GPT that talks exactly like you, answers questions about your data, or solves your company's specific problems, today's video is for you. We're talking about fine-tuning LLMs, what it is, why it matters, and how you can actually do it yourself on your local machine or in the cloud. By the end of this video, you'll know how to take an open model like Tiny Llama, Fee 3, or Llama 3 and train it to become your personalized AI assistant. Let's dive in. So, what exactly is fine-tuning? In simple words, fine-tuning means teaching a pre-trained language model new patterns without retraining it from scratch. Think of it like this, GPT or Llama are like students who already know English and logic. Fine-tuning is giving them a short course on your specific subject, maybe medical data, finance reports, or your company FAQs, so they can specialize. Alright, so picture this. You've got a massive base model, think GPT, Llama, or Mistral, already trained on terabits of data. It knows a bit about everything, but not a lot about your domain. Fine-tuning is like giving that generalist model a set of laser-focused flashcards. You feed it carefully chosen examples from your domain, so it adjusts its internal weights to perform better on that specific kind of task. For example, OpenAI fine-tunes GPT models for code, we get Codex. Anthropic fine-tunes Claude for safety alignment. You can fine-tune a smaller open model to answer customer support queries in your brand stone. The beauty? You don't need billions of dollars. Parameter-efficient techniques make this possible even on laptops. There are two big flavors of customization today. Full fine-tuning, you adjust all parameters of the model using your custom dataset. Parameter-efficient tuning, PEFT, methods like LoRa and adapters tweak a tiny subset of parameters. PEFT is blowing up because it's cheaper and faster. You don't need thousands of GPUs, just a smart training setup. There are three main reasons why fine-tuning makes sense. One, domain adaptation. Train the model on legal, medical, or technical language so it stops hallucinating. Two, style and personality. Make it sound like you, a YouTuber, brand voice, or assistant tone. Three, efficiency. Instead of running RAG or vector searches every time, fine-tuned models internalize that knowledge, making inference faster. So, fine-tuning is basically memory plus style plus focus. But remember, it doesn't replace RAG or prompt engineering. It complements them. Now, here's the truth. Fine-tuning is 90% data prep and 10% code. Your fine-tuning success depends entirely on the dataset quality. So let's talk best practices. Keep your dataset clean. Remove duplicates, nosy examples, or contradictory labels. Format everything in instruction response pairs if you're tuning a chat model. Aim for balanced examples so you don't bias the model. Annotate or augment data if necessary. Sometimes synthetic augmentation helps, but be careful with hallucinated content. And please, no copyrighted data dumps. You'd be surprised how many projects fail just because of messy, unauthorized content. LLMs are trained on millions of text examples. When you fine-tune, you don't retrain all billions of parameters. Instead, you adjust a few small layers. We call this LoRa, LoRank adaptation, or PEFT, parameter-efficient fine-tuning. It's like tweaking the last few layers of a neural network while freezing the rest. Let us do a deep dive into the fine-tuning. Let's compare the full pre-training with fine, tuning a already trained model. Typically, when a large language model is trained, it is trained around a lot of parameters, more than billions. This process is time-taking and is very costly in terms of resources. The training data for full training is huge, something which a typical laptop won't be able to handle. The time taken for training pretty long, sometimes months even with best of GPUs and resources. The resources needed to perform the training are enormous and pretty costly. Again, something that can't be done in local personal machines. 
Popular examples are GPT, Claude and many other models that you use today. In this video, we are also going to fine-tune a model and you can relate how expensive training a large model like GPT would be. Now let's see how fine-tuning works. Typically, the data set is very small and focused on a domain and a subject. The resources and time needed to fine-tune are fairly smaller than that of full training. We are going to try fine-tuning in my laptop, which doesn't have a GPU in the next half of this video. So when we fine-tune an existing LLM, we basically add an adapter layer of knowledge on top of the base model. Such adapter layers or plug and play. In our diagram, you can notice a blue layer on top of the LLM, which is basically our fine-tuning adapter layer. Such fine-tuned models are generally laser-focused on a specialized topic and have ability to answer Q&A around company policies or a specific domain. Let's get into fine-tuning now. We are going to fine-tune a very small model. Given that we are trying this in my laptop that has 32 gigabytes of RAM with 8-core Ryzen CPU and no GPU. Our requirements for this fine-tuning project are going to be minimal. We need transformers, PEFT module and datasets. Our requirements. TXT also reflects that. Our fine-tuning logic is divided into parts and the first part is to download a reference model which we are going to fine-tune. Here we are using Tiny Llama, which has only 1.1 billion parameters and can be fine-tuned in a low-resource machine like mine. This is a small model. Let's see the hugging face documentation of this model and learn more about it. We have chosen this model for the resource constraints we have. But if you read the official documentation, even this model has 1.1 billion parameters and it took 90 days to train this model using 16 high-grade GPUs. Now this fact should give you a fair idea that how complex and time-taking resource-heavy it is to train a full-blown reasoning model that we typically use. Okay, so now that we know about our reference model, let's resume our code. After the first step where we downloaded the model and took an instance of it, next step is to define the PEFT parameter efficient fine-tuning configuration. While PEFT is a concept, LoRa low rank adaptation is an implementation of it. We are defining the PEFT config here. The instance of our model is now wrapped around the PEFT config with line number 25. Fine-tuning is a lot about data preparation too. Our next step will be loading the dataset in memory in a format that can be used for fine-tuning. Here we're loading the fine-tuning data from a local file called dataset.json and tokenizing it for better processing. The sample data I have prepared is some random information about myself, extrapolated with samples generated with chat GPT. Since the model doesn't know anything about me, I will fine-tune it to answer questions about me, so that on the base LLM, Information about me will be added as an adapter layer. Note the format of the data here. Each data point defines an instruction and input, mostly empty, and an output that we expect the model to return. The data size has to be sufficient enough to be fine-tuned, else the tuning may fail. Next step is defining the training configuration. Now this is where I spent a lot of time in tweaking the parameters and re-evaluating the output. Especially the learning rate and num train epochs are a few parameters that may require a lot of tuning before you get the expected result. The parameters also govern how fast or slow the fine tuning will be. Next step is a simple command about executing the training step with all the configurations we have done so far. We are giving the data set, the model and our training configuration to the train command. And the last step is just about saving the fine-tuned model in our local directory, which will become our model for reference for evaluation and testing. So as a summary, we first load the reference LLM that we want to fine-tune, then define LoRa configuration, load dataset, define training config, 
train the model and save the model. These are the six steps in the whole process. Now is the time to run the training and test the limits of my local machine. So we are just going to run the main logic file using Python. Hmm, we are missing the activation of the virtual environment. Let's activate it first. After activating the environment, we will run the same command again. This step can take time depending on your reference model size, training data size, tuning parameters and system configuration. It will first load the model and run through all the six steps that we just understood. Alright, the training has started. You see it incrementally progressing. We see all the steps getting executed one by one. And finally, the training step, which is a time-taking process. With my laptop's configuration, it took roughly 30 minutes for this activity to complete. I'm skipping the wait here and jumping to the part where the training step was completed. After around half an hour of wait, and in the third attempt of evaluating the fine-tuned model, I was successfully able to get the model answer correctly about me. Let's evaluate the model. Please note that there are evaluation frameworks for doing this, but in this video, we are just evaluating manually. In the test script, I am loading the model from the local directory where the output of the fine-tuned model was placed and asking a simple question about me that where do I live? We see some output now that the model was loaded into the CPU and the fine-tuned model says that I live in New York. Maybe according to the training data, I do live in New York. Let's check. So there are some ambiguous points in our training data. Let's check the exact question that we asked. Cool. So according to the training data, I do live in New York and our fine-tuning did its job correctly, even with some ambiguity. This gives me a lot of satisfaction as this was my third attempt and each attempt was increasingly time-taking. Let's talk about some learnings that I got in the process. 1. We need good hardware for production grade fine-tuning. This was just a POC. 2. We need cleaner and well-formatted training data. 3. We should understand the tuning parameters well. Now that we know what is fine-tuning and how to do it, and in our previous videos, we have seen what is RAG and its implementation. It is very important to know what is the difference between RAG and fine-tuning and what fits the use case and what do you really need. We will be covering this topic in our upcoming videos. Videos related to RAG, I will pin in the description. So watch out for the new videos and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next video. Till then, have a good one.